ברוכים הבאים לפודקאסט נפש לוחמת. היום אנחנו נמצאים בעזה. המ"מ שלי, ינאי קמניקה, זיכרונו לברכה, מגיע, מחליף אותי. בעצם זה מה שמציל אותי מהעמדה. לוחמים צעירים שעכשיו סיימו הכשרה, דבר ראשון שהם עשו נכנסו לעזה, והם מתגלים כלוחמים הכי מטורפים. So on this channel over recent months, I have been covering things about like IDF propaganda in general. We had two videos on the actual IDF's TikTok account. Hi everyone, Lutana Tammy here. And then we had another video about the IDF's YouTube account, which was funny, telling us all these inspirational stories about IDF soldiers who were ballet dancers and cooks in their spare time. So, so inspiring that fascist soldiers have hobbies. And in these moments, I learned how to dance. When I dance, I feel free. I think I made the best decision for myself to keep dancing. My name is Kai Alon. I'm a dancer from Khadera, and I serve in the Israeli Defense Force. But also, what I spoke about a lot in those videos was the use of women and also the woke washing of their fascist crimes. Now, by the title, you guys probably wouldn't think this is like a super blackpilling thing while covering, you know, what Israel's been doing over the last few months. But for me, it was because how like normalized this female IDF influencer thing is, how many followers they have, the stuff they say, it just makes me feel like there's absolutely no hope for Israeli society in that this climate they're in right now, completely gripped by fascism. Most people not only support what's going on right now, they want more of it. Like I'll throw it on screen, but there was this poll and it was like only 5% think they're using too much force or something like that, like a really minuscule number. And then you see stuff like this, you see so many people going around with firearms and it's just a society that has never been okay, but has gotten worse and worse and worse. And in this bubble, they think a lot of this stuff is normal. Like, it's not disgusting to post yourself um, at, like, an occupied, conquered territory and talk about, you know, you want to wipe Gaza off the map. And that's just a normal thing to say. When we're talking about an influencer who was famous for being an IDF cat girl, for example, it seems, like, bizarre. It seems silly. But then you realize it's a symptom of like a wider problem in how dehumanized generally Zionist Israelis have like view Palestinians. And it's just honestly sickening. Like doing a podcast from bombed out ruins of an open air prison you kept people in, but it was still their home. And this is an appropriate place for a fun podcast um, with other soldiers. Again, it's just a very, very sick society. And just think about all the inhumane, terrible militaries of even the last 100 years. And imagine if they existed today, because that's essentially what the IDF are doing. It's one of the most cowardly armies to ever exist. And it's one of the most cringe-inducing armies to ever exist in that their propaganda, this woke washing, this stupid liberal stuff about how the IDF tolerate everyone being like female or being gay and stuff. That's all so wonderful as long as you just uphold this starship troopers society. And that's the vibe I constantly get when covering IDF propaganda, it's just Starship Troopers. Like, the movie probably didn't have the IDF in mind, but it fits perfectly if you want to read that movie being about the Israelis. In my mind, it fits so, so perfectly, including the role of women in that movie itself. So we're going to talk about all of this today, we're going to focus on two influencers that I found on this page. And yeah, just follow me on social media. Instagram's the main one, and that's what we're going to be covering mostly today. And support me on Patreon if you want to support my work, and also if you want access to the Patreon Discord server. So I was actually making another video on IDF TikTok, and I'll probably make that tomorrow. It will go up on the weekend or something. And that's how I stumbled across this page, which led me down IDF female influencer rabbit hole. So it's called Girls Defense, has 176k followers, the first IDF women's page, and it's been going on for a long, long time. If you go on like their highlights, which is like highlights of their stories they've posted in the past, you just get a bunch of Israeli female soldiers singing most of the time, and they all have their usernames there. And more often than not, you click through and they're just like pretty generic social media influencers now who probably once served in the IDF as part of conscription. So if you click through to some of these pages, and actually if you go on the page itself, it posts various IDF influencers. And probably the most famous in that you've probably seen her before. 
and you've come across, like I said, IDF Cat Girl, is Natalia Fedev. Now, initially with all those Cat Girl videos, a lot of people thought she wasn't actually in the IDF. She was just like cosplaying as an IDF soldier to get popular. But no, it appears that she is affiliated with the IDF military. Now, what you're going to see on her profile is her actually in Gaza itself. I don't actually think she's fighting the war. I think because she's a popular social media influencer, she probably is technically in the IDF, but they probably take her around for photo ops. Even though, obviously, like lots of women do fight, I don't think this person specifically is uh, doing any fighting, especially considering how they treat this like one big joke. Now, uh, like if you just go on their profile, it's pretty sickening, but you have just like first traps. Keep calling me a Zionist, nothing makes me prouder. This is like a disgusting picture, which you're going to see come up again. Um, it's at a beach in Gaza. IDF beach episode. Just her smiling with her gun. Again, dystopian fascist shit right there. Uh, has like recap videos of November. It's just her posting like her in military convoys near tanks, posing in front of stuff. You know, absolutely lovely here. Just talking about her experience, you know, in the IDF and just like doing loads of poses with her guns, saying stuff like last week I was at a Bruno Mars concert in Israel. Now I'm at war listening to his songs. Life is unexpected. And then contrast that with posts like, hi, Barbie. And she's at the Barbie premiere and she's dressed up like Barbie. Now she's a cyberpunk version of Siri because she also does cosplay. So, yeah, get your Siri cosplay in with your fascist propaganda. And if you actually go on her story highlights it really is some of the grossest stuff i've seen that's why it's so blackpilling right it's like first traps cosplay mixed with disgusting quotes and pictures about the situation so uh, here's a little video enjoy the views of gaza posted in december of just you know people's homes whole societies being utterly destroyed by the idf and she posts a smiling emoji like it's funny like what they're doing is funny right now and you've probably have seen those pictures of those Germans who worked at the camps, and they're all smiling. They're all having a good time. And when you see that picture, it's a pretty famous one. You're like, how could these people do that? How could these people be so happy and do what they do? And you're seeing it right now. And that's what I want to get across this video. You always ask yourselves when you learn about the history of World War II and all the terrible stuff, you're like, how did people go along with that? I, I would have spoke up. I would have been the one in that society to go against it. But I hope what you're seeing with Israel now is how certain societies can get completely gripped by fascist hysteria in that they will dehumanise a population so much they'll just post, you know, here is their homes completely destroyed by us. Isn't that funny? It's funny because they're not actually people. And you'll see with her language in these posts, she doesn't consider them people. You guys can go look at them yourself, but like posing at a beach in the Gaza Strip. Again, the picture's coming back of her at the beach. I have to recreate this photo in a bikini once it's all over. Their shore is so beautiful. They don't even deserve it, for real. Again, why don't they deserve it? They don't deserve the beach, but you do. Because you're conquering their land, completely destroying their society, which is already being completely controlled by your military. They don't deserve nice things. Why don't they deserve nice things? Why don't you tell us? Achievement unlocked. Bop a Gazan doggo. So that's where we're at now. We're just getting all this Gen Z slang in with uh, apartheid fascist war crimes. Morning, because if it was good, Gaza wouldn't be on the map already. 800,000 followers this person has. This is the stuff they post, along with first traps and cosplays. Doggo from Gaza, glad he made it out alive. They're known for abusing animals. I'll spare you the horrible pictures. Apparently, the Israelis are so moral, so ethical, they treat dogs wonderfully. They're saving the dogs, actually, from the Palestinians, who treat them terribly. Where, like, the IDF are literally treating Palestinians, like, worse than animals. I could talk about that person's page all day, but it really is just sickening shit. And, you know, the tone of this video for me, like I said, although it's so ridiculous, this person, just imagine the society which is okay with this. Imagine what world is okay with what she's saying right there, while posting just normal stuff, like cosplays, movie premieres then talking about wiping Gaza off the map and stealing their beaches and talking about how badly they treat dogs. And you guys might say that's not a normal person. And I would agree with you. Like, normal people don't think like this. Normal people don't act like this. But this isn't a normal country. And like I said, it's gripped by fascist hysteria. There aren't really any anti-war voices in Israel at this point. They all want the same thing. They want the whole of the Palestinian territories completely conquered by Israel. And it's a totally normal thing to say that on TV. Netanyahu makes no secret of it. We see the Western leaders scrambling all the time when they're asked, well, Netanyahu doesn't say there should be a two-state solution. They pretend he's being taken out of context. This country might not like Netanyahu generally, but they like what the Israeli military are doing. 
and they support what the Israeli military are doing. Now, um, through Girls' Defense, remember this IDF uh, influencer page, I found someone else who also has nearly 700,000 followers called Julie Orin, and she's like a gun influencer as well. Also is in the IDF as well, I think was in the reserves, but appears to have fought in the war uh, to some capacity, all they're being used for propaganda. You can go through their posts and see all their posts about like training with guns, going to war in a tank. Or October 7th had a lot of stuff about just, you know, first trapping, about being in the military and stuff. I, I don't know if this is them narrating it, but they posted some disgusting propaganda about the reason that Gaza is underdeveloped is because um, the people who rule Gaza, they don't use the funds properly. They pour them all into weapons. That's why Gazans don't have clean water. Not because of Israel's blockade, not because Israel controls basically everything in Gaza. Palestinians can't develop their own country better. And this is like a liberal thing you see a lot. That Palestinians living in Gaza, if they'd simply elected someone different back in the day, like 17 years ago, then it'd be like Dubai or something. Totally absurd logic. But again, it's how they live with themselves. It's the Palestinians' fault. It's not our fault. We're so humane. We look after the dogs. They treat them like garbage. Now, why this account is utterly bizarre to me and just like really sick is um, this person also has a podcast and the podcast is called Warrior Spirit Blog. Now, when you flip through the page, like older episodes, it's all just a pretty like generic podcast. I've seen them talking about relationships, everything like that. <laughs> ואז הבנתי דבר כל כך חשוב, שהיום אני סומכת על כל מי שאני פוגשת. לא כי אני חושבת שכל מי שאני פוגשת יעשה טוב, ממש לא. קודם כל, הם בני אדם. אז מן הסתם כנראה שהם יטעו. יש להם דרך אחרת לראות את העולם, לי יש דרך אחרת לראות את העולם. אני אטעה. אני אטעה. אבל אל תדאגי, ג'ולי חושבת את האופציונות. היא באמת מנסה את ה-IDF סולדים בבומבד אוט רואים של גאזה. עוד פעם, 2023 פאשיזם היא פילמת פודקאסט. in someone else's country that you've utterly destroyed for fascist colonialism. And again, this person has 560,000 followers. These posts about this podcast have like thousands and thousands of likes. So again, who's liking this? It's just average people in Israel, right? Average people. So let's just have a look at this little... Um, קליפ I got of the podcast. ברוכים הבאים לפודקאסט נפש לוחמת. היום אנחנו נמצאים בעזה. המ"מ שלי, ענאי קמינקה, זיכרונו לברכה, מגיע, מחליף אותי. בעצם זה מה שמציל אותי מהעמדה, כי אחרי עשר דקות, העמדה הזאת מחוסלת, נשלח RPG, עוד רימונים, והם ארבעה שם שנהרגים, ואני בעצם היחידה שניצלה מהעמדה, בזכות זה שנפצעה. אני יורדת לטירונים, מסבירה להם תמונת מצב, נותנת להם תמונת מצב על האירוע, מה קורה. וכל זה את והם מתגלים כלוחמים הכי מטורפים. אני יריב ביבה מלוכת ג'אד, בן העדה הדרוזית, בן עשרים. מלחמה אין פה דרוזי, לא דרוזי. במלחמה אנחנו כולם ביחד, זה אותה ארץ, זה אותה אדמה, אנחנו נלחם ביחד עד שאנחנו ננצח ביחד. כל עם ישראל, אנחנו פה שומרים עליכם, תהיו חזקים כדי שאנחנו נוכל להיות חזקים, ואנחנו נשמור עליכם עד הסוף, בעזרת השם אנחנו ננצח את המלחמה הזאת, ונחזיר את הביטחון למדינה. And I also have another clip of her being interviewed herself. What made you decide to enlist as a combat soldier in the IDF? I wanted to protect my country. I also wanted to develop myself. I wanted to become better in everything that I do. Why do you think it's important to draft to the IDF, especially now? I think we all saw that the Jewish people don't have any other place in the world but Israel. And we have to defend our people and to defend our country. What's the biggest tip you would give to any girl who wants to be a combat soldier in the IDF? To always remember why you started at first, to raise your spirit. There will be hard times. It's not easy to become a combat soldier in the IDF, but you have to remember why you started. There will come times that you will look back and you will see how you changed and how you grow. And I think this is the greatest thing about life in general. So obviously interviewing people who are fighting right now, talking about their experiences. People look very young, have women there. as someone from the Druze community as well, just to show they're oh so inclusive in the IDF. And in the second video, you just see us spout stuff about, you know, this is the only land that's safe for Jewish people, which is something Zionists always say, completely ignoring, you know, millions and millions of Jews live all over the world. More Jews live in America. Loads of Jews live in New York. Like, it's not uncommon for Jews to be all over the place who live very normal safe lives like terrible discrimination historic going back obviously millennia and obviously sadly because of the right-wing dominance of even western politics there's a lot of anti-semitism still out there 
and often actually anti-Semites hide behind their support for Israel, and many of the far-right parties in Europe who are anti-Semitic support Israel, which should tell you everything that this land is not safe for Jewish people, and telling everyone that, oh yeah, Zionism, Judaism, pretty much the same thing, synonymous with each other, is dangerous, and makes people who want nothing to do with this country less safe, because they're all seen as part of this country, part of this propaganda. They're all seen as people who support it, when hundreds of thousands of Jews do not support the state of Israel, and definitely don't support what they're doing. And these are just two examples. Like I said, if you go on the page, there are loads of IDF influencers. And usually their real job at the moment is being a gun influencer or working in firearms or something, which would probably tell you everything about the society as well, how hyper-militarized it is. I was doing the math the other day. I think it's something like nearly 10% of the population are in the military. Like, think about that in any other country. Think about your own country. Think about how many people are in it. And then think of 10% were in the military, and even more had military training. And it is the Starship Troopers Society, because we saw recently with that young man who's gone to prison again for refusing to be drafted. Okay. All right, so uh, explain to the chat who you guys are, Tal and Ella, if you don't mind me, because uh, uh, they, they want to they wanna know what's going on. I am Tal. I am 18. I just finished high school. Um... I am currently in the process of refusing service. Every non-Arab teen uh, gets the draft order um, in Israel. Um, that means if you're Jewish or um, or like someone who came to Israel at a young age, um, you get the draft order. Um, and it's very entrenched in society, the idea of military service. Most conversations uh, we'll start with uh, w like the question of where did you serve, um, and then the answer, no, I didn't serve, is very um, what's it out of the ordinary, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's like you're talking about dozens of people every year, uh, perhaps, who uh, do this in you know a country of several million. Think about his life in Israel if he stays. He's always going to be seen as a coward. He's essentially ostracizing himself by having some moral convictions in not serving in the military. And in Starship Troopers, it's basically a similar thing. The only people who can vote and work in government are people who serve in the military. And that is the case pretty much for Israel as well. Obviously, there are exceptions for religious communities who back Netanyahu. But most people, if you want to live a normal life in Israel, you got to join the military. Doesn't matter your gender. And again, Starship Troopers wasn't about Israel, but it fits very perfectly. And we got the nice dystopian twist of... Not only do the IDF pump out their cringe-worthy propaganda focusing on diversity and women, how lovely, now you actually have an industry of IDF influencers who are both popular, not only just in Israel, but also in America as well. They do a lot of their work with firearms in America too. And again, like I said, this might not seem like the most important thing that's happening right now, but to me it's very, very depressing. Because a lot of people like to frame it as it's actually Hamas versus the Israeli government. And those poor young soldiers who are drafted and go to fight, they are victims too. And I would say that could be more of an argument you could apply if most people don't support the IDF's actions. Because if most people support it, and most people are conscripted, and they go in and do it anyway, there is a very small movement of people who reject the conscription, and then they go to jail instead, right? Again, if this society wasn't okay with what's happening, there would be a massive movement to dodge the draft. Like, the Vietnam War was popular for the whole time in American society, and you still had a very, very visible anti-draft movement, which was popular. Because that is a country, for all its faults, even though the majority supported the war, that is a country that actually had a significant element who opposed the war and opposed fighting in this criminal war in Southeast Asia. There is no parallel in Israel because, again, they're gripped by fascist hysteria and they're all going along with it. And to not go along with it means if you're a professor in university, as we've seen, you'll get attacked by your own students. If you're a journalist, anything like that, you'll be hounded, maybe hounded out the country, maybe interrogated by the IDF or police. This has been happening a lot in Israel because, again, it's being gripped by this fascism. And I know most people will say Israel has always been like that, and it has to some extent, but there used to be different forms of Zionism 
which saw themselves as more humane, saw themselves as more progressive, leftist, all that stuff. They used to be socialist in Israel. It was founded as a, you know, socialist country. Not saying it still didn't do terrible crimes, but what's happening now is Israel has been getting more right-wing in the last 30 years since the Oslo Accords, and now you have what it is today. A society of people who use the words never again to do it again. And they're doing it right now with the full support of Western governments at this point. And of course, most prominently, that is Joe Biden supporting what's going on right now. So yeah, black pill and shit. Stay tuned for my IDF TikTok video part three, I think. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.